Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We have integral x from 0 to infinity of x log 1 plus x squared over 1 plus e to the power 2 pi x. Mathematica and wall frame alpha get a wrong result for this integral. This 19 appears as 17. Log a should be multiplied by minus 1 half. Here and there, it is multiplied by 1 half. Let's discuss the tools needed to evaluate this integral. So we have log a in the result. A is the glacier's Kenklin's constant, which is given by this limit. Limit as big M tends to infinity. Summation over small m from 1 to big M. M log M. We also have this function of big M. M squared over 4 plus log M multiplied by this quadratic polynomial. M squared over 2 plus M over 2 plus 1 over 12. Since the limit exists, we can replace big M by 2 big M. We get the same limit, log A. So here, the sum has two capital M terms. M squared over 4 becomes 4M squared over 4. That's M squared. Log M becomes log 2M. Every M in the bracket is replaced by 2M. The Laplace transform has this nice property. The integral over positive x of f1 of x times f2 of x is equal to the integral over positive x of the Laplace transform of function f1 times the inverse Laplace transform of function f2. To tackle our integral of interest, we make use of these very standard Laplace transform results. The Laplace transform of sine omega x times the heavy side unit step function u of x is omega over s squared plus omega squared. If sine is replaced by cosine, omega in the numerator is replaced by s. The Laplace transform of e to the minus omega x u of x is 1 over s plus omega. Suppose that we have this periodic function from minus half to one half. f of x is 4 pi squared x squared minus pi squared over 3. The period is 1. It's an even function. Its Fourier series is the constant a0 plus summation n from 1 to infinity. a n cosine 2 pi n x. For this particular function, a0, which is the integral of f of x over a period, is equal to 0. a n is 2 over the period. That's 2 times the integral of x over a period. Let's take it from minus 1 half to 1 half. Here we have the function f of x multiplied by cosine 2 pi nx. Integrating by parts twice, we get that a n is 4 times minus 1 to the power n over n squared. So the function divided by 4, that's pi squared x squared minus pi squared over 12, is summation over positive integer n of minus 1 to the power n cosine 2 pi nx over n squared. Add and subtract half. The right hand side becomes pi squared x plus 1 half squared minus x plus 1 half. We need to add 1 fourth. We also have minus 1 over 12. If x is between minus 1 half and 1 half, x plus 1 half is between 0 and 1. This expression is valid for any real valued x if we replace this x plus 1 half by the fractional part of x plus 1 half. The fractional part of real number x is x minus the floor of x. The fractional part is greater than or equal to 0 and is less than 1. We do the same exercise again, but with a linear function, x defined on the interval between minus 1 half and 1 half, a function with period 1. It is an odd function. The Fourier series is a weighted sum of the sine functions. The coefficient bn is 2 over the period. Integral x from minus half to half of x times sine 2 pi nx. Integrating by parts twice, we get that x between minus 1 half and 1 half is summation over positive integer n of minus 1 to the n minus 1 sine 2 pi nx divided by pi n. This part here is equal to 0 when we use the limits of integration. We can write this x as x plus 1 half minus 1 half. x plus 1 half is between 0 and 1. Replace this x plus 1 half by the fractional part of x plus 1 half. We get this identity here, which is valid for any real valued x, except when x is an integer plus 1 half. If x is an integer plus 1 half, then x plus 1 half is an integer. The fractional part is equal to 0. The right-hand side is minus pi over 2. However, the sine function here will be sine of pi times an integer, which is 0. We have here integral x from 0 to infinity, x log 1 plus x squared, e to the minus alpha x. Alpha is positive. The antiderivative of x, e to the minus alpha x, is minus 1 over alpha squared times e to the minus alpha x between brackets 1 plus alpha x. Do integration by parts. We need to multiply the antiderivative of x e to the minus alpha x by log 1 plus x squared. When x tends to 0 from above, we get log 1, which is 0. When x tends to infinity, the limit is also 0. Note that this function 
is 1 plus alpha x log 1 plus x squared over e to the alpha x. The denominator grows exponentially with x. When we do integration by parts, we also get plus 1 over alpha squared e to the minus alpha x times 1 plus alpha x times the derivative of log 1 plus x squared. That's 2x divided by 1 plus x squared. Take this two outside. We have the exponential e to the minus alpha x multiplied by this ratio, alpha x squared plus x divided by 1 plus x squared. In the numerator, add and subtract alpha. Alpha x squared plus alpha over x squared plus 1, that's alpha. So we can split this integral into an integral over positive x of e to the minus alpha x times 2 over alpha. The second integral is 2 over alpha squared integral x from 0 to infinity, the exponential x minus alpha divided by x squared plus 1. This integral is 1 over alpha. We obtain 2 over alpha squared. In this integral, let's do the substitution y equal to alpha x. Alpha is positive. y is 0 when x is 0. When x tends to infinity, y tends to infinity. The integral becomes e to the minus y. y over alpha minus alpha over y squared over alpha squared plus 1. dx is dy over alpha. Multiply upstairs and downstairs by alpha. In the numerator, we get y minus alpha squared. In the denominator, we get y squared plus alpha squared. Write this ratio as y over y squared plus alpha squared minus alpha times alpha over y squared plus alpha squared. Now we employ the property of the Laplace transform mentioned on the first page. We have an integral over positive y of the product of two functions. The integral is equal to the integral of the product of the Laplace transform of e to the minus y times the inverse Laplace transform of this function of y. The Laplace transform of e to the minus omega x u of x the heavy side unit step function is 1 over s plus omega. This Laplace transform, written using the variable x, is 1 over x plus 1. The Laplace transform of cosine alpha x, u of x, is y over y squared plus alpha squared, using variable y for the output. If cosine is replaced by sine, we obtain alpha over y squared plus alpha squared. This means that the inverse Laplace transform of this function of y is cosine alpha x minus alpha sine alpha x. We don't need to write down the heavy side unit step function as our integral is over positive x. With positive alpha, the integral over x from 0 to infinity of x log 1 plus x squared e to the minus alpha x is 2 over alpha squared plus 2 over alpha squared times integral over positive x of cosine alpha x minus alpha sine alpha x divided by 1 plus x. Here is the mean integral. The integrand is x log 1 plus x squared over 1 plus e to the 2 pi x. Here is x log 1 plus x squared. Multiply numerator and denominator by e to the minus 2 pi x. e to the minus 2 pi x has a magnitude strictly less than 1. If beta is less than 1, we can write 1 over 1 plus beta as summation g from 0 to infinity minus beta to the power g. In our case here, we get summation over non-negative integer g minus 1 to the power g e to the minus 2 pi x g. Swap the order of integration and summation. Replace g by g minus 1. Now we have the sum over positive integer g. This g becomes g minus 1, but we can also write it as g plus 1. This g plus 1 becomes g. This is the integral we have just investigated. Alpha is replaced by 2 pi g. We can use this result here, replacing each alpha by 2 pi g. This is what we get. Interchange the order of integration and summation. We have the sums obtained on page 2 using the Fourier series. This summation is this part here. That one is pi times the fractional part of x plus 1 half minus 1 half. We also have this part, which is 1 over 2 pi squared, summation g from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the g minus 1 over g squared. This summation is zeta of 2 times 1 half, that's pi squared over 12. Divided by 2 pi squared, we get 1 over 24. This is what we get when we combine these two integrals. We can simplify. 1 over 6 minus 1 is minus 5 over 6. These two fractional parts give us plus the fractional part of x plus 1 half. In the integral, replace x by x minus 1. The integral now is from 1 to infinity. This part becomes 1 over x. Note that inside the fractional part, if x is changed by an integer, we get the same fractional part. Thus, this bracket here doesn't change. We are integrating over the interval x greater than 1. We split this interval into intervals of length 1 half. We have summation over positive integer m. Inside the sum, there are two integrals, the first from m to m plus 1 half, the second from m plus 1 half to m. When m is 1, we have an integral from 1 to 3 over 2. This integral is from 3 over 2 to 2. 
when n is 2, this integral is from 2 to 5 over 2. That one is from 5 over 2 to 6 and so forth. The fractional part of x plus 1 half is x plus 1 half minus the floor of x plus 1 half. If x is in this interval, the floor is 1. If x is between 2 and 5 over 2, the floor of x plus 1 half is 2. Generally, if x is between m and m plus 1 half, the floor is m. So this bracket is x plus 1 half minus m squared plus x plus 1 half minus m minus 5 over 6. If x is between 3 over 2 and 2, x plus 1 half has a floor of 2. Generally, when x is between m plus 1 half and m plus 1, the floor of x plus 1 half is m plus 1. The integrand here is like there, except that m is replaced by m plus 1. Write down the infinite sum as summation small m from 1 to big M. We later take the limit as big M tends to infinity. Expand the squares, divide by x, and integrate. For instance, when we expand this square, we get 1 fourth. 1 fourth plus 1 half minus 5 sixth is minus 1 over 12. Minus 1 over 12 divided by x has the antiderivative minus 1 over 12 log x. When we use the limits of integration, we get minus 1 over 12 log n plus half over m, which is 2m plus 1 over 2m. We get the other terms in a similar fashion. Now our integral of interest is this sum here after taking the limit as big M tends to infinity. The sum of 3 over 2 is 3m over 2. There is a minus sign. The sum of small m is 1 half big M times big M plus 1. We take m squared minus 1 over 12 from this bracket and that one. From here, the remaining term is minus 2m. Here it is. This is 13 over 12. So this bracket is m squared minus 1 over 12 minus 1. Here is this term. We have this sum. The sum is m squared minus 1 over 12. Between brackets, we have log 2m plus 1 over 2m plus log 2m plus 2 over 2m plus 1. This is log 2m plus 1 minus log 2m plus log 2m plus 2 minus log 2m plus 1. These two terms go away. We are left with log 2m plus 2 minus log 2m, which is log m plus 1 over m. We can write this sum as two sums, one of them with log m plus 1 and the other with log m. From this sum, isolate the term corresponding to small m equal to big M. Now the sum stops at m minus 1. We can also start from 0 because log 0 plus 1 is 0. Replace m by m minus 1. We get summation, small m from 1 to big M small m minus 1 squared minus 1 over 12. This is multiplied by log m. So we have this term here. And now we can combine these two sums. We have log m multiplied by m minus 1 squared minus m squared. We get a minus sign here. Log small m is multiplied by 2 times small m minus 1. This is this part here. The integral of interest is this integral times minus 1 half plus 1 over 24. This integral itself is given by the limit as big m tends to infinity of this function of big M. Let's manipulate the summand. We have 2m log m minus log m plus 2m log 2m plus 1 minus 2m log 2 minus 2m log m. From here, we have log 2 plus log m plus 1 minus log 2m plus 1. We have log m plus 1 minus log m. We have a telescopic sum. We get log big M plus 1 minus log 1, which is 0. Log 2 is multiplied by the number of terms in the sum, which is big M. These two terms go away. We have 2M minus 1 times log 2M plus 1. Finally, when we sum this part, we get minus 2 log 2, the sum of a small m from 1 to big M. That's 1 over 2 big M times big M plus 1. This is minus big M times big M plus 1 times log 2. This integral is given by this limit. We have a function of big M, including this sum. From this sum, isolate the term corresponding to small m equal to big M. Here it is. Rewrite 2m minus 1 as 2m plus 1 minus 2, split into two sums. Each stops at big M minus 1. Note that summation small m from 1 to 2 big M, m log m, can be divided into two sums, one with the even terms and one with the odd terms. Note that when small m is 1, we have 0. It is not a problem here to start with 3 log 3. The same story applies when the summand is log m rather than m log m. We replace this sum by the difference between these two sums. Also, this sum is replaced by the difference between these two sums.
in this sum, write log 2m as log 2 plus log m. Split into two sums. Here is one of them. The other, when evaluated, is big M times big M plus 1 log 2. Do the same here. Log 2m is log 2 plus log m. When we sum log 2, m times, and multiply by minus 2, we get minus 2 big M log 2. We also get minus 2 summation small m from 1 to big M log m. This is the natural logarithm of big M factorial. This sum appears here, multiplied by 2, when we replace this part. This is equal to 2 times log the factorial of 2 big M. We now make use of log A, where A is Glacier's Kinkling's constant. This is log A multiplied by 2. This is minus log A. In this part, we replaced every big M by 2 big M. When we add, we get log A. This sum is multiplied by 2. Here is this sum with a minus sign. M squared over 4 times 2, that's M squared over 2. From here, we get minus big M squared. This quadratic polynomial is multiplied by 2. This minus sign becomes a plus sign. These two terms are minus 1 half times big M squared. We can write this as log 2 plus log big M. Log 2 is multiplied by 2M squared plus M plus 1 over 12. Log M is multiplied by 2M squared plus M plus 1 over 12. Minus M squared minus M minus 1 over 6. Log M is multiplied by M squared minus 1 over 12. If we go back to this integral, these two sums are what we have here. This means that we can write down this integral in terms of log A. Here is the integral, and here is log A. In addition to the two sums, log A has this part. It appears here multiplied by minus 1. We also have other terms. The step before last is to invoke Stirling's approximation in dealing with these two terms. The limit as k tends to infinity of k factorial over square root 2 pi k, k to the k, e to the minus k is 1. Since we are interested in the limit as big M tends to infinity, log M factorial can be replaced by 1 over half log 2 pi plus half log M plus M log M minus M. Log 2M factorial can be replaced by 1 half log 2 pi plus 1 half log 2M plus 2M log 2M minus 2M. This is 1 half log 2 plus 1 half log M, and this is 2M log 2 plus 2M log M. We have a difference. These two terms go away. These two, 2m log m minus m log m, that's m log m, minus 2m minus minus m, that's minus m. We also have 1 half log 2 plus 2m log 2. This difference is multiplied by 2. So we have 2m log m minus 2m plus log 2 plus 4m log 2. We simplify this expression. The part with factorials is replaced by these terms. This is the limit that we have. The integral with fractional parts is this limit plus log a m plus 1 is m times 1 plus 1 over m. This logarithm can be written as log m plus log 1 plus 1 over m. Same thing here. This logarithm can be written as log 2 plus log m plus log 1 plus 1 over 2m. This logarithm is 1 over m minus 1 over 2m squared plus a term of the order 1 over m cubed. That logarithm is 1 over 2m minus 1 over 8m squared plus a term of the order 1 over m cubed. When this part or that part are multiplied by linear function of m, we get 0 as m tends to infinity. This term, when multiplied by quadratic function of m, also tends to 0 as big M tends to infinity. Doing the cancellations and simplifying the result, we get that this limit is equal to minus 3 over 2 plus 23 over 12 log 2. The integral with fractional parts is this limit plus log a. The integral of interest is this quantity times minus 1 half plus 1 over 24. The integral of interest is 19 over 24 minus 23 log 2 over 24 minus 1 half log 8.